jump right into it. So there's an interplay between genetics, behavior, and environment, okay? So psychological and social behaviors are correlated with the interaction of multiple genes, and multiple genes, another way of saying that is saying polygenic, and environmental factors. So we'll consider this an interplay at, at both the individual and population level. You know, when you're talking about gene expression, um, you're talking about uh, the expression of RNA, or the expression of DNA, which is then can be cor is correlated to RNA. So we can determine gene expression biochemically via levels of RNA or mRNA if you want to talk about protein coding genes. But and then we can do that via RNA seq. Back in the day, you would use microarray, but now more commonly we use RNA seq, which is a shotgun whole genome sequencing, next generation sequencing technique. Okay, so gene expression is influenced by the environmental factors. And that's including those within the internal environment and those outside or the external environment. Again, there's this interplay. Genetics influ influences behavior, behavior influences the environment, environment influences behavior, genetics in uh, influences the environment, etc. Okay, um, so again, that's the dynamic interaction and it plays a critical role in psychological development, including that of behavioral traits. Um, remember the Ocean 5 model uh, for traits, okay, which is openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And again, these aren't the only traits, it's just a model, but. And the, the dynamic interaction starts the moment you are born, okay, with the development of temperament, which is the innate predisposition to a certain personality traits. And you know, you're born with temperament, but the, the, the environment quickly modified the behavior of an infant. Again, that's the interplay. Rather than being fully predetermined, genetic inheritance provides guidelines that are often further shaped by the environment. So we're now going to go through a few examples that you have to know for the MK. I'm not just going over it for nothing. Anytime I give an example, it's because you have to know it. Um, the critical period. It's a period during development in which the absence of certain individual stimuli of the environment can actually cause loss of neurons that would have been dedicated to that stimuli. That happens between three and eight months of age. This is important because, again, it's, it's essentially this. You, as a baby, if you're not given certain visual stimuli, you will actually will not develop the neurons that you would have developed had you been... Um, exposed to that stimuli. So that's the critical period, okay? And the other example is regulatory genes, okay? Transcription factors, prokaryotic operons, okay? The sigma factors allow to allow for the binding of um, the recognition of, of promoter elements by uh, the, the RNA polymerase in um, E. coli and other prokaryotes, okay? These are all things that are affected by environment. So I'm going to give you an example of the prokaryotic operon, specifically the LAC operon. The, the LAC operon is an inducible system, and it's associated with promoter elements, activator ele elements, activators, sorry, promoter elements, activators, repressors, and operator elements, okay? And the example I'm going to give you is the LAC operon, and I'm going to give you the example where it is induced first, and then I'm going to give you where it's repressed. So again, we're induced here. What's the concentration? Well, glucose is absent, lactose is present. So lactate, lactose enters E. coli via lac permease because it's expressed at a basal level, basal low level, no matter what. And that gets converted to allolactose. Allolactose can then allosterically modulate the lac repressor protein such that it can no longer bind to the operator sequence. Low levels of glucose activate a second messenger signaling pathway in E. coli le leading to the activation of adenylate cyclase adenylate cyclase converting ATP to cyclic AMP. Okay, cyclic AMP can then bind to the catabolite activator protein right here, or and this is also called the CRP protein. And that cyclic AMP cap complex can then bind to the cap binding site, which is an activator site, and activate the transcription of this LAC operon. So again, you need two things. You need to inhibit the inhibitor, okay? You need to allosterically modulate the inhibitor so that it can no longer bind to the operator region and you need to activate the the promoter region by getting an activated protein essentially a transcription factor like this act act just like this cap cyclic amp complex and that then will get you high level of expression okay that's induced that's induced that's when the system is induced what about when it's repressed when it's repressed that means that glucose is present the lactose in this case is irrelevant and can be high lactose it can be low lactose if you have glucose it's going to be um, repress. So here's what essentially I'm not going to go through the whole thing again, but essentially, no matter if this is bound to this or not, you're not going to get high level of expression because there's no cap boat. The, the cap cyclic AMP complex is not present. It can't bind to the cap binding site. It cannot activate this locus, and you don't get high level of expression. You just